ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is the news beat presented to you by Ladies Like and Jay Santino. Follow, follow the beat, follow the beat from the studio to the street. Info with the flow keeps you sharp and in the know. Sit back, relax, enjoy the news. Follow. You know I'm a real positive soul, but when I read about funds for public programs that disappeared, it frustrates me. Public money going up in smoke, I find it weird. You are not alone with your frustration. All over the world, civilians are victims of corruption. Fraud in public sector is hard to fight. Look at what Transparency International brought to light. Each year, they publish the Perceived Corruption Index. This is a list of 180 countries from worst to best. The most corrupt country got the lowest score, and the least corrupt country got the highest score. 100 means super clean. Zero means corrupt to the core. So who makes countries' performances as good or poor? The scores are given by business people and experts. This year, Syria, South Sudan and Somalia were most corrupt. Nigeria is also not doing amazing. It was ranked number 148 out of 180 countries in the ranking. Although President Buhari has started anti-corruption initiatives, the situation in the public sector does not seem to improve. Other African countries are doing great. Botswana is stealing the show. They have been the least corrupt African country for 22 years in a row. They are ranked number 30 Four globally. That's better than European countries like Italy, Greece, and Hungary. Uganda is also far behind in plus 151. With a score of 26, a lot of anti corruption campaigns need to be done. Transparency International also reveals a clear link between growing corruption and lack of press. Where corruption is high, generally speak out less, and politicians are not held accountable, and their governing behavior becomes irresponsible. According to Transparency, every week a journalist is killed in a highly corrupt country. Wow, this is serious. And meanwhile, governments are supposed to protect. You're dead right about that. We better look at Botswana and see how they have prioritized anti-corruption campaigning on their agenda. Would the Ugandan government be ready for such a mission? I have no idea. Why don't we ask the people who make the decisions? The Uganda Communications Commission has set their sights on a new mission. Another set of strict regulations for online data communication. It applies to all service providers, including online publishers, news platforms, radio and television. Anyone online is in their line of vision. So what does that really mean? It's not as simple as it seems. The UCC statement defines content as any sound, still picture or text. This sounds like almost anything. Can they really regulate everything? They might be targeting specific sites or even interfering with people's rights. So, if the UCC won't let them be, is freedom of expression no longer free? Samsa UCC has the right to regulate, but will this be too much on their plate? It could help monitor publications that like to publish false information, but will UCC have the capacity to get the upper hand on technology? Many have doubts. How will it play out? The directive goes live on April 2nd. Let's see if it goes as UCC envisioned. WhatsApp groups can be such a drug, full of gossip and tongues that work. Maybe you need to stay in the loop with the progressive WhatsApp group, like the Busoga think tank. Some citizen heroes we should thank. They are raising 10 million shillings with donations from those willing to buy textbooks for primary schools, using WhatsApp as a fundraising tool. Cool, now that's WhatsApp. How did the idea come up? Last year when PLE results came back, the Busoga think tank was taken aback. Rural primary schools in Busoga fell flat. They made it their mission to change that. But Busoga has great schools like Mwiri, Wanyange Girls at Kira College Butiki. Believe me, Busoka ruled secondary, but the challenges are primary, and buying textbooks is an action to better Busoka's primary education. Even if Ugandans are in the diaspora, they can catch the campaign on social media with the hashtag buy book for Busoga to support our citizen heroes big idea. I'm MC Yala reporting for Newsbeat. 2018 is about to shock up by 18 young tech startups. From IT to finance to agriculture, these companies will shape our future. In health, we have to help up by Daniel Ryonga, providing compassionate care in Uganda. And you receive a portable health care kit that will have maternal health care set. Agriculture has a Korean by Esther Carreda, providing access to better services for farmers. And Vouch Digital by Evelyn Namala, making transactions easier for agro dealers. Who's got you covered when it comes to money? Mama Pay has options for better accountability. You can digitize financial records with Numida or make a retirement plan with Mazima. Online brands have Digimac Communications and Willaps for best IT solutions. The leader in transport tech is Safe Border, the best known startup in Kampala. For clean cooking, turn to Fumba Smart. For eye care, Wazi Vision set itself apart. And the leader in 3D animation production is Robert Malinga's Creatures Animation. They made a caravanda at my homework. Yes, and each of these startups is hard at work. Keep a close watch in 2018 for innovations like you've never seen. That was the news on the beat. Next week will be another hit. 
Still let it like I'm Jay Sentino, reporting life and direct with love and respect. Follow the beat, follow the beat, follow the beat, follow the beat. Yes. Follow the beat. Follow the beat, follow the beat, follow the beat, follow the beat. Yes. Follow the beat. <laughs>